Welcome back to Life's Chillin'. My name is Avital, and this week's Parshat is Parshat Vayechi. And in Parshat Vayechi, we see the end of Jacob's life, Jacob the father of the 12 tribes. And the Torah tells us that Jacob lived 17 years after he arrived in the land of Egypt, which is quite beautiful in a sense because Joseph was sold into the slavery at the age of 17, meaning that he had had 17 years with his son, before his son was sold into slavery. And now, uh, while his son is the viceroy over Egypt, the second in command, he has another 17 years with his son. So quite a beautiful full circle moment for him. But in recognizing that his death is approaching, um, Jacob decides that it is time to bless his sons. And in the course of that, Jacob decides that he wants to bless um, Menashe and Ephraim, who are the sons of Joseph, as if they were his own children. He wants to give them the same types of blessings that he's going to bless his, the way he's going to bless his children. And so Joseph comes with his sons, Menashe and Ephraim, and he brings them to his father to bless. Now, traditionally, again, the firstborn would be blessed first. And the firstborn also, when somebody was going to be blessed, they would sort of place their hands over the, the person. And the, you know, the older child would be put under the right hand, sort of the dominant, the strong hand. Um, and so the Torah starts by telling us that um, Jacob was blind in his old age, basically. It says Israel, who's another name for Jacob. It says Israel's eyes were heavy with age. He could not see. And then the Torah continues. Joseph took the two of them, Ephraim with his right hand to Israel's left and Menashe with his left to Israel's right. And he drew close to him. But Israel extended his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's hand, though he was the younger, and his left hand on Menashe's head. He maneuvered his hands, for Menashe was the firstborn. So, again, in, in preparing the sons to be blessed since his father was blind, Joseph went ahead and he put Menashe under the right hand and he put Ephraim under the left hand, which is how it should have been prepared. But then we see that Jacob switches it. He says, okay, and he goes like this. He just crosses his hands over and he says, all right, Ephraim, Menashe, right hand, left hand, younger son, older son. So what do we see? And the Torah continues and it says, Joseph saw that his father was placing his right hand on Ephraim's head and it displeased him. So he supported his father's hands to remove it from upon Ephraim's head to Menashe's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, for this is the firstborn. Place your right hand on his head. But his father refused, saying, I know my son. I know he too will become a people, and he too will become great. Yet his younger brother shall become greater than he, and his offspring's fame will fill the nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you shall Israel bless saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Menashe. And he put Ephraim before Menashe. So very interesting here how we see that Jacob saw, he perceived that um, the younger son was going to be greater than the older son in terms of his reach and um, and his magnitude. As I spoke about just two weeks ago in Parsha and Miketz, it's very interesting because this is a different brotherly dynamic. Whereas we have seen before when a younger son was said to be greater than the older son and it created such animosity, we don't see that here. The Torah doesn't allude to any sort of animosity between Ephraim and Menashe. So when I was talking about this with my mom, as I often do, we, we sort of brainstorm Parsha ideas together, she came up with this idea and she was like oh you know what this reminds me a lot of the story that we saw back in Parsha Toldot when it was Jacob who was being blessed by his father Isaac. So let's just go back for a second and, and review that and I'll get to the point that she was making. So what we saw is that Isaac was about to die and Isaac summoned Esau basically um, saying that he was going to die, um, he decided to summon Aesop and give him the blessings. And the Torah tells us, it says, And it came to pass, when Isaac had become old, and his eyes dimmed from seeing, and he summoned Aesop his older son, because again, he wanted to bless him. So that's very interesting, because we saw here that in this week's Parsha, Jacob is not able to see any longer. The Torah tells us that he's blind. And his father, Isaac, was also blind and realizing, oh, I'm going to die. So both of them call upon their sons to bless them. 
And while Aesop was away, um, just as a reminder, while Aesop was sort of away hunting to prepare delicacies so his father would bless him, Jacob came in and he took the firstborn blessing from his father. And when Isaac realizes this, the Torah says that he's, the, the, the Isaac says, indeed, he shall remain blessed, meaning that he's not changing anything. He already blessed Jacob with the firstborn blessing and it's going to stay that way. So what we thought was really interesting about this connection, about both fathers being blind, about both fathers nonetheless providing the blessing to the, to the younger child, the, the firstborn blessing, that greater blessing to the younger child over the older child, it, the stories kind of are mimicking each other. It's the same instance, the same thing happening. I think the beautiful lesson that we can take away from this is in the need to trust our instincts. Neither Jacob nor Isaac were able to see. Both of them had lost their sight, but they had intuition and instincts and their gut feelings that told them what to do in the situations. Jacob knew that he needed to bless Ephraim over Menashe because Ephraim was going to become the greater nation and needed that extra blessing. And while Isaac may not have first, while he intended to give Esau that firstborn blessing, once he realized that it had been Jacob he gave the blessing to, he thought that that was the correct thing. That's why he said, indeed, the person shall remain blessed. And not only that, but in Parsha Toldot, Isaac goes ahead and he blesses Jacob a second time at the other at the end of the Parsha, um, giving him encouragement and giving him support. And once we are able to see, we cannot unsee. Once we have those instincts and that gut feeling, we cannot take that away. That's going to linger under the surface. And that's a gift that God gave us that we really need to trust. God gave us that gift of that instinct and that intuition. And it isn't something that should be ignored. It's something that should help us to guide our decisions to make better decisions in the future. And so I wish you all a wonderful week and a Shabbat Shalom. And I look forward to speaking with you next time.